Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at GeForce Now on a Chromebook. So yeah, this is actually pretty awesome because NVIDIA has officially released GeForce Now support for Chromebooks. This is the official method. You don't have to do any workarounds or anything like that. You'll just open up Chrome, head to GeForce Now, sign in, and you can start streaming your favorite games. I mean, it's never been easier to play AAA games on a Chromebook. This is really awesome. I've been waiting for this for a long time because I'm a big fan of GeForce Now. I've actually been using it for a long time, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably seen me post a bunch of videos about GeForce Now and cloud gaming in general. So before we jump right into it, I do want to mention that my friends over at NVIDIA were kind enough to sponsor this video, so I do want to give them a big shout out. But keep in mind, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to let you know it's not going to work out. And I've been using GeForce Now on my channel for a long time before they ever reached out to me. So if you're not familiar with GeForce Now, basically what we have here is a cloud service that allows us to play the games we already own or free to play games using GeForce Now on different devices. From Android devices to Windows PC, even Mac OS, and now we can actually use this on Chromebooks, which is really awesome because these are very inexpensive units and they handle this just fine because all of the processing power is done in the cloud at NVIDIA's servers. So right now, there's hundreds of ready-to-play games. As long as you own this game or you have an account for the free-to-play games, you can play them with GeForce Now. And when it really comes down to it, GeForce Now actually supports thousands of games through single-session installs. So yeah, it's actually super easy to get started, and GeForce Now allows you to play the games that you own. They're not trying to sell you any games, we're just paying for a service that allows us to stream these games to different devices, like our Android device, Windows, Mac, and now Chromebooks. And there's actually two different tiers here. So the free version, zero per month, you get standard access and one hour session links. It's great that they're giving us a free option here. You can test it out without spending any money. All you need to do is create a free account. Next up, we have the Founders Edition, $4.99 a month, priority access, extended session links, up to six hours, and RTX on. So with this one here, it does support RTX. So if you're into playing Metro Exodus with RTX on, but you don't want to fork out the cash for a card that supports RTX, $4.99 a month here, and we can run the games that support RTX at 1080p 60, with RTX on, obviously. And finally, there's a new little special offer that's popped up. It's $24.99, it's a single payment, you get 6 months of the Founders Edition, everything here, plus the Hyperscape Season 1 Battle Pass token, and exclusive Hyperscape in-game content pack. I've actually been using GeForce Now for a very long time, ever since it came to the NVIDIA Shield. It was in beta there, and as soon as it was out of beta, I just jumped right on the Founders Pack for $4.99 a month, and I use it on pretty much all of my devices. So yeah, it's simple enough to use. After you have your account, just open up the Chrome browser, head over to GeForce Now, and you can sign in from there. I'm using an Xbox One S controller, but if you don't have a controller, you can always use the built-in keyboard and trackpad. Or, if it really came down to it, you could connect a real mouse and keyboard to your Chromebook and use that for GeForce Now. It's really up to you. So like I mentioned, there's hundreds of ready-to-play games on here, but I'm going to go with something free to play first, and that's going to be Dauntless. You can search for it from the top menu, and as soon as you start playing a game or finish a game up, it's going to be in your library, so you can easily find it and launch it from there. And since Dauntless is only really available on the Epic Store, you will have to sign into your Epic account so you have all of your saved data there. But as soon as you're finished with the sign-in, it's going to launch that game. I'm going to go ahead and move my camera a little closer, and we'll get into some gameplay. So here we are with Dauntless, 1080p, Ultra Settings, Resolution Scale set to 100%. We're running at 60fps, I and mean, this is running flawlessly here. As you can see, the game is fully playable, and we're streaming this from NVIDIA servers to our Chromebook. And real quick, in order to stop a game, you can actually just exit the game like you would normally through the menu, or you can just hold escape on your Chromebook. It'll bring up a window, are you sure you want to quit? and it'll close the game down. Now we're going to move over to a harder to run game. I want to show you a little something that's pretty cool here. I own this on the Uplay store, but luckily they have the Epic Games version and the Steam version. I'm going to go with Uplay because that's the only place I own Far Cry 5. Same thing here, just like Epic, you have to sign into your Uplay account, but as soon as that's done, you're good to go. Alright, so obviously this is Far Cry 5, and some games do show this. I'll head to Options, Video, and you can see we're using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX T10. We have 8 gigs of VRAM, and for my graphical settings, 
maxed out here. Ultra, got the HD textures on, anti-aliasing all the way maxed out. We're going to run a benchmark and see how this thing performs. So it's about to wrap up. Remember, epic settings with the HD texture pack on. And we're getting an average of 59 FPS, a maximum of 84, and a minimum of 45. So yeah, I mean, Far Cry 5, Ultra Settings, 1080p, with HD textures on, it's a pretty hard game to run. You need a pretty decent rig to run this at a constant 60 FPS. And this is right there at 59. Really nice performance. And finally, for my Chromebook test in this video, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Really hard game to run. We're at very high settings, and it's running really, really great. As you can see here, I mean, the game is fully playable, still using that controller, and again, everything is streaming from their servers. So yeah, running GeForce Now on a Chromebook has been pretty much the same exact experience as running this on a Windows PC or an Android device. I haven't run into any issues here. Really easy to use now that we can just open up Google and go to GeForce Now. It just works, and it actually works quite well. But there's one thing I did want to mention before we get out of here, and it's about the Chromebook itself. This is not a high-end machine whatsoever. It's the Samsung 350 XBA K01. We have a dual-core Celeron N4000 CPU with a base clock of 1.8 GHz and a burst up to 2.6. 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. So, I mean, as laptops or Chromebooks go, this is a pretty low-end machine, and we just saw it running these games at full speed, 1080p, ultra, and epic settings. So it really doesn't take much to use GeForce Now because everything is being done in the cloud on NVIDIA's servers. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. At least give this a try with the free version. Trust me, if you have a decent internet connection, you're going to love GeForce Now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.